Hi, welcome back to Focal Point and AFR Talk. Brian Fisher is my name. Glad to take your phone calls. Number to call, 888-589-8840. We want to take calls on religious liberty in America. Uh, any reaction to the Supreme Court ruling protecting the right of invocations in Jesus' name before lawmaking assemblies? Look to get your take on that. And then we'll take calls on Benghazi, what you think is going on with the whole Benghazi deal. Mentioned on Friday, it was breaking news on Friday that John Boehner is going to appoint a select committee to look into Benghazi, which is going to be headed by Trey Gowdy. Now, Trey Gowdy is a headhunter. That guy is an alley fighter. He is a take-no-prisoners guy. This is going to be terrific. And Trey Gowdy will play the soundbite here in just a minute, saying, look, he's got evidence that there has been a concerted effort to cover up the truth when it comes to Benghazi. Now, let's start with clip number two. This is Cheryl Atkinson. She's the one that got bounced by CBS. She was doing good reporting on Fast and Furious. She was doing good reporting on the complete scam of global warming. By the way, we are now up to 17 years and nine months of no global warming. Nada, zip, zilch. 17 years, nine months, no global warming at all. In fact, for more than half now of the satellite record, we've had no global warming. There was some global warming during the first half of the satellite record, but since 1995, none, zip, 17 years, nine months, no global warming whatsoever. The whole thing is a scam, ladies and gentlemen. It is a hoax. We've got global sea ice at record levels. L.A. Times in 1972 saying that the Arctic is going to be ice-free by 2013. Now we're finding out that the problem that the polar bears are having, I arf you not, the problem that the polar bears are having is there's too much ice near the North Pole. There's too much ice for them. That's the problem that the polar bears are having Right now, so anyway, Cheryl Atkinson doing good reporting on the green energy scam, good reporting on Fast and Furious, and starting to do good reporting on Benghazi, and it got spiked. And we find out part of the reason is the guy that wrote the email, that wrote the talking points for Susan Rice, turns out to be the brother of the guy that was her boss, the guy that headed up CBS News. He wasn't going to let his little brother be made to look bad. So when she started to get too close to the truth, they just clamped down on her, wouldn't put her stories on the air, and finally just fired her altogether. So here is what Cheryl Atkins says. She's talking here in this clip, clip number two, with in an interview with Reason, the folks at Reason.com, uh, uh, about the motive for this cover-up of the cover-up. Uh, if the, the truth came out uh, about the fact that the White House, that this wasn't the CIA, wasn't the State Department, it was the White House itself that was doctoring these talking points and preparing these, doc, uh, these talking points that were bald-faced lies, saying this was all about a video and some kind of spontaneous uh, demonstration. Here's what Cheryl Atkinson had to say. I think like any government that may be facing criticism, especially eight weeks before a presidential election, right. this was crucial and could have been devastating to them. If we knew everything now, then that we know now, like one week after it happened, I think that really would have been devastating to the campaign. But I think the primary goal for any political group that is in a position like this would be to delay the release as long as possible of the damaging details, which they've effectively done in many cases. And as they dribble out slowly, they begin to say, well, now it's old news and who cares? And they've had time to try to politicize and controversialize the reporting, which all serves the purpose, I guess, I guess the initial goal. So as Cheryl Atkinson saying, look, this was clearly done for purely political reasons, to get Obama reelected. If this smoking email, smoking gun came out before the election. Remember, we were inside two months now uh, to the election when this attack happened. It would have been devastating, is her word, to Obama's re-election uh, campaign. So that's why they had to say this was a spontaneous... Rob, let's grab uh, the clip A16, the audio soundbite. Uh, so, so this was the official White House position. It was a spontaneous, just kind of a mob protest, this, ragged demonstration, people just gathering with rocks and tin cans and stuff like that to show their disapproval of this video. It was just kind of a, a, a video review, uh, a movie review gone wrong. That was the, uh, that was the image that they painted. But, but remember, these guys came to the compound with RPGs, rocket-propelled grenades. Now, I want you to listen to this sound by President Obama talking about situations over in the Ukraine and I want you to listen to what President Obama says about what's going on in the Ukraine and then take the template of what President Obama says and apply it to what we know about the attack on Benghazi. Let's listen. 
The notion that this is some spontaneous uprising in eastern Ukraine is belied by all the evidence of well-organized, trained, armed militias with the capacity to shoot down helicopters. Generally, uh, local protesters uh, don't possess that capacity of surface air missiles or uh, whatever weapons were used to shoot down helicopters. Okay, so President Obama says, look, these are militias. This is well-organized. It's coordinated. They've got advanced weaponry. That's not just some kind of mob demonstration over there in Ukraine. Well, exactly the same rules apply to Benghazi. That's not some kind of mob demonstration. People, You don't walk around with an RPG strapped to your hip. But going to the movies is going to take my RPG with me. Hey, let's go, to, let's go to McDonald's. Don't forget your RPG. There's nothing spontaneous about this. It's organized clearly a matter of a militia effort. Now, Cheryl Ackeson, clip number three, uh, talking about what her career would have been if she, she's talking here with Brian uh, uh, Kilmeade. And, uh, you know, Brian uh, Kilmeade, uh, you know, Atkinson starts talking, uh, starts talking about the fact that, that her opposition is using words like conspiracy, delusional. They're trying to controversialize this story. It's a legitimate story, a legitimate news story. Uh, they are trying to find some way to get the public to dismiss it, to discount it, to trivialize it, and to controversialize it because it's a story that they don't want to be told. Now, Brian Kilmeade uh, says uh, you have an administration here that's putting up blocking signs everywhere you go and tries to go after those who are asking the questions. So Brian Kilmeade, Fox & Friends, says to uh, Cheryl Atkinson, look, you've got an administration now that's trying to block the release of this information. Trying to, Reporters that are trying to do good work, they're just trying to get in their way every time they turn around. Here's the rest of his question and then Atkinson's response. And if we look at your background, Cheryl, you're hardly somebody who goes after for conservative causes. You go after everybody. You went after the Bush administration. You call it a bait and switch when it comes to TARP. You investigated the Red Cross in 2003, won awards for it. So you just are pursuing this story like anything else. How is the answer you're getting different from anything else? I, I basically am trying to keep my nose to the grindstone, and if I were influenced by the left-wing blogs and the people who are trying to steer public in a certain way, I would be left covering pretty much nothing but the weather now. So <laughs> I'm still continuing to do what I see as my job, but I can tell you that other investigative journalists have noticed the trend that you've mentioned. I was at a conference about a week and a half ago, and these are reporters, Pulitzer Prize winners from the New York Times and other publications who are all raising red flags about what the Obama administration has done in terms of restrictions to press freedoms. And they were saying things like, we have to speak truth to power and stand up and take action. So uh, Cheryl Atkinson says, look, if, if I allowed the left wing and the people that are trying to steer public opinion to, and I allowed myself to be influenced by them, only thing I would be talking about would be the weather. And again, so basically what she's saying, look, the media now, they're just, they're just PR flax for President Obama, for the Obama administration. And she's hearing this now. But what she's hearing now from more and more people in the media is that the Obama administration is trying to clamp down on them and they're not liking it. They're sort of pushing back against what the Obama administration is trying to do to them. And, you know, Obama's, I think, in a pretty vulnerable place right now because the media is becoming very disaffected with him. They're starting to turn on him in some ways. The polling data is just brutal uh, for him. Last, uh, last polling data we saw by 53 to 39 voters want Republicans in charge in November and not Democrats. President Obama's approval rating is down around uh, 41, somewhere in that neighborhood. And this Benghazi thing certainly is not helping. Phone call number, by the way, 888-589-8840. Now, uh, this is clip number four. This is Adam Schiff. He's a Democrat representative from the state of California, and he's reacting to Boehner's announced intention to, to form a bipartisan, a select bipartisan committee to look into Benghazi. Now, bipartisan means there'll be Democrats on there that can ask questions and do talk to witnesses and, and all that kind of stuff, just like there are Republicans. This isn't going to be a Republican witch hunt. It's bipartisan. You're going to have Democrats and Republicans. And Adam Schiff is saying, look, here's what I think the Democrats ought to do about this thing. Let's listen. 
Uh, but I, I don't think uh, it makes sense really for Democrats to participate. I think it's a, just a tremendous uh, red herring and a waste of taxpayer resources. So I hope the Speaker re will reconsider, but it looks like he has bowed again to those uh, uh, um, from the farthest right of his conference. But when you say you don't think it makes sense for Democrats to participate, you're saying that you think that the Democrats should not appoint anybody to the special committee and let it simply be Republicans holding this investigation? Uh, you know, that's what I recommend. I don't our leadership will ultimately decide, but I don't think it makes sense for us to give uh, this select committee the, any more credibility than it deserves, and frankly, I don't think it deserves very much. We've uh, tread down this path so many times. So this is a Democrat saying, look, we ought to just boycott that whole thing. Don't even show up. Don't send any members of the committee to ask questions. Uh, just boycott the whole thing and try to make it deprive it of any sort of credibility. Now, here's Trey Gowdy, and here's the reason why this Adam Schiff doesn't want Democrats to show up, because this guy's going to be in charge. Clip 5, Trey Gowdy. Let's listen. Well, I have evidence that, that, that not only are they hiding it, it, there's an intent to hide it. I, I can't disclose that evidence yet, but I, I have evidence that there was a systematic, intentional decision to withhold certain documents from Congress, and we're just sick of it. So we're going to get him to come explain why we're getting documents 20 months late. All right, so that's Trey Gowdy, and that's why Adam Schiff doesn't want any Democrats to show up at this thing. We'll play the Bob Beckel soundbite on the other side of the break. Uh, Bob Beckel, a Democrat, and they're, they're starting to get into a panic over this Benghazi thing. They're talking about boycotting a select committee, not even participating in it, not even being a part of the effort to get at the truth about what happened at Benghazi. And we'll hear Bob Beckel after the break. I mean, Bob Beckel's a Democrat on... Uh, the Five, he's one of the five panelists on that Fox News TV program called The Five. And, you know, you'll, you'll, you, I'll just let you make up your decision for yourself. But when you listen to Bob Beckel talk uh, on the other side of the break, you think, man, these people are in full-fledged panic mode. There's something about this Benghazi thing that scares them half to death. So we'll have that and your phone calls when we come back after the break, 888 589 Talk about the Supreme Court decision or talk about Benghazi. Do you support a select committee to try to get at the bottom of the Benghazi scandal with Trey Gowdy in charge? Is that an idea you like? And if so, why do you like that idea of a select committee? If you like the Supreme Court ruling on prayer, tell us why. 888-589-8840. Back in two.